Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing great. I have been away for quite a while, uh, but I'm happy to be back. I am also very happy to share with you that I have written and published my first book titled What is True? Lessons Learned from My Journey to the Unknown. This week I will be offering this book the ebook for free so you can get it for free the ebook you can get it for free on amazon that is today and tomorrow just go on amazon and um, get your ebook for free and also gift it to your family and friends uh, it is my valentine gift to you i'm very sure that some of the topics in this book will resonate with you just a little information about this book. Uh, for me, why did I write this book? Um, the truth is that ever since I was little, I have always been the kind of person that never accepted anything just for the sake of accepting it. I never went with the mainstream idea or belief or opinion. I always had my own opinions or I always ask questions about why, about why certain things were the way they were. I always wanted to find out what the truth was about any issue. So I didn't just accept um, hook, line and sinker, whatever that was shoved down my truth, my truth. I wanted to find out the reason why things happened the way they, they did. And this, this has always been my life anyway. But then in 2015, uh, my life changed, especially in 2016, when I attempted suicide three times. And that opened another chapter, a totally new chapter that I never knew existed um, for me. My world changed and I began to really ask questions about what was true about life, all the things that I have been taught about God, religion why do we have so many religions why do we have different gods and um what was the truth about love romantic relationships about forever um you know living forever with someone in love what was the truth about happiness you know about positive thinking what is the truth about suffering why do we even suffer i wanted to find out the truth about politics and our governments, what was the truth about um, success and poverty, you know, what is the truth about race and um, nationalism and all those things. I was just asking myself all these questions and what happened was the more I asked questions to myself and of course I just threw the question to the universe out there. Um, the more I asked questions, the, the, the more I sort of got, on, got an overload of information about answers that I never knew were possible. So I began to write down all the things. As I asked these questions, I got answers, so to say. It was not like I was asking a direct question to anyone. I was just throwing the question out there. But then, magically, I started getting a lot of information in the form of um, answers to my questions. And I was just writing down. It, it just happened to me everywhere I went. Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. And I would start writing stuff. It even happened that I had to always take uh, a, a pen and paper with me wherever I went. Because I was never sure when something would pop up in, in my head. And so I didn't want to miss that opportunity to write down my thoughts. So whether on the bus or walking home or at home or in the middle of the night, I was bombarded with a lot of information about several topics. And um, so I compiled all these information on a paper and then started to transfer them on, on my laptop, on Microsoft Word um, document. At a point I said, okay, that all this information cannot just be for me. There has to be someone out there that probably is asking all these questions as well. So why not just compile them into a book and you know send it out to the world and let it find the person that is meant to read it. 
So it's not as if I intended to be an author. If you had told me several years ago that I was going to one day be an author, I would probably have, uh, I don't know, I don't know what I would have done, but I never planned to be an author. I never planned to write books my life. Um, but I am happy that I did. And this the process of writing this book not only healed my childhood trauma I had a lot of childhood trauma for those of you who do not know I also um, spoke in details about my my life if you have watched my TEDx talk it's there on YouTube titled courage to be imperfect I'll recommend that you go to TED, TED TEDx on YouTube the channel and look for my or just type on YouTube courage to be imperfect and then you would find me there then you would understand sort of you know the background behind why this book was written so I am so happy that I was able to put down my thoughts in the form of a book now it is out there on Amazon you can get it and I believe that this will help anybody that is right now asking questions about what the truth is I mean look around you in our world today a lot of things are happening um, not just the wars um, we have a lot of problems in Europe in the US Africa just like the whole world is trying to collapse so to say and uh, people are beginning to wake up people are beginning to ask questions about all the things that they have been told it's almost as if our governments um, are working hard against us so to say you know, it's, uh, some of us, especially here in Europe, cannot believe what is being done there in Brussels. The kind of rules that, that they are beginning to um, create and develop, uh, I, I find them totally against the people and not for the people. And then we are beginning to question, especially the, the mainstream news, the mainstream media, a lot of propaganda and everything. So. A lot of us are having a kind of, um, uh, a, 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 I don't know what I have to call it, mental breakdown and um, they're beginning to question the things that we have been fed all, all our lives. Uh, they're beginning to confront reality and begin to ask, is it that we have been lied to all this while? So if they are doing all this propaganda today, who knows what, what lies we have been fed for several years, only that lots of us are now beginning to wake up to see that all the things we were forced to believe several years ago through the mainstream media and through our governments that most of those things were actually not true and then it begs to question what what then is truth uh, and then we see that um, especially in europe in and in the us uh, there is this uh, idea that there is a kind of a ministry of truth or um, disinformation or you know the government trying to uh, explain to us that they are the ones that have the truth that we should believe them and uh, every other thing that does not come from them is disinformation uh, the, so they have the truth they are the, we are to listen to them because they are the truth they have the truth and it, 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 it begins to make you really question what is actually the truth who told them that they have the truth that that is the truth how do i know what the truth is how does anyone actually know what the truth is everybody has their own idea of what the truth is you know how do i actually know exactly for sure with certainty that this particular idea is the truth where is it written which book can confirm to me that this topic is the truth because when i believe that this is the truth Someone else somewhere will come up with their own idea of the truth and counter my own truth. So the question then is who holds the truth? Where can I find the truth? Where is that one absolute truth that everybody in the world will believe? And it's, it's difficult to, to really say what exactly the truth is because what is true for me is different from what is true for you. What is true for the United States may be different from what is true for Germany, where I live in. What is true for Christianity is, or probably may be different from what is true um, in, in Buddhism or in Islam. Or you know, There are all kinds of truths from, from my perspective. But this is why this um, book was written. And I would really recommend that 
if you are like me and you're beginning to question all these things um, just just go ahead and it's the book the ebook is free just go ahead and get the book today or tomorrow it, it's free for you you don't have to pay anything I, I am not even selling this book so to say I, I wrote this book not just not because I wanted to solely make money from it but I really um, had this passion this burning passion to let it out uh, out there for someone that really needs it and then there are so many so many interesting chapters in this book so many topics I mean I will just um, go through the table of content it's divided it's divided into four parts the part one is about the child and the society what you know as we grow up what the child is taught I wrote all these things from my own perspective and my experiences so you are going to see a lot of or read a lot of my own personal experiences I was really I hope that I was vulnerable or raw enough in this book so that you get an idea about um, yeah not just about me but about my background and what informed me to write this book so we have the part one the child and the society part two is about the search for love I was searching for love all my life and yeah and um, now I understand um, sort of the truth about love and the search for relationships so if you are like me if you're still in that in that uh, period in your life where you are looking for a romantic relationship and you know you really need to find someone to love and you want to be loved which is a good thing um, I really recommend that you get this book and read about the important things what you have been told about what love is might not really be true or it might not be what you have believed all this while and in fact three is um the search for meaning i was searching for purpose all my life what i was here for until i discovered the burden of purpose the purpose this search for purpose could be a burden it, it is actually or it could be an illusion and um then part five is um, called the awakening here we have all kinds of um, topics about you know when I, I started to awaken you know after I, I tried to commit suicide and then I, I, I something happened that changed my my reality I, I couldn't do it anymore and then when I woke up the next morning my life changed all my depression my despair everything went away and I sort of became a new person so I, I call it the awakening and this is um, this particular um, part part four the awakening is where I describe a lot of um, yeah the the information sort of download that I got during this period of my awakening and then the last part is part five which I titled the game of life um, yeah it's about understanding that life is a game and um, it's only those who know how to play this game that will win it uh, there are no right or wrong answers here you just have to learn how to play this game and then if you approach life this way then um, probably you're going to have a much more easier life but there are in so many interesting topics so what I'm going to be doing is over the, co the next couple of weeks I will take my time to you know just um, share with you a few points that I find interesting in each um, chapter all of the chapters are amazing that one of my favorite chapters is chapter 8 chapter 8 here I hope you can see it chapter 8 life is jealous and nothing belongs to you that is chapter 8 and for me as I wrote here treat whatever you have as a loan from the universe this can be taken away at any time from you let us sink in again treat whatever you have as a loan from life because it can be taken away from you at any time this realization changed my entire perspective about life life is jealous nothing belongs to anyone think about it again 
We think that our children belong to us. Our jobs belong to us. We think that our partners belong to us. Our houses belong to us and our governments belong to us. And so many of our friends belong to us and so many things, our money, you know. But is that really true? If these things really belong to us, how is it then that somebody gives birth to a child and maybe at age 15 or 18 or 20, the child abandons their family and, you know, just walks away never to be seen again. In that moment, will the parents say that this child belong? Of course, at one point, the child belonged to them, but now the child does not belong to them anymore. Hmm. Why is it that, you know, we get married and, you know, for we promise each other that we are going to live happily ever after. I belong to you. You belong to me. We love each other. You know, we, we, we promise to be with each other to the end of our lives. But then after two years or five years, one of the partners says, um, I'm sorry, I, I don't have feelings anymore for you. I found someone else. They just leave. And that's just, that's just it. That's the end. At one point, they belong to us, but at this point, they no longer belong to us. They belong to another. You know, these are questions that we really have to start asking to find out what the truth is about possession, about this thing called mine. My house is mine. This money is my own. This child is mine. This man belongs to me. He's my husband. Or this woman is my wife or my girlfriend. She belongs to me. Or... This job is, belongs to me. I, I work at so and so, so place. I'm a project manager. Um, I'm a vice president of this particular um, department of sales or something like that. And this is my job. It is my position. And is that really true? Pro probably it is true in your mind for that moment, but it may not be true next month. What happens if you lose your job? That at one point that job belonged to you, but at this moment, in this moment, it does not belong to you anymore. It belongs to some other person. What if you got fired? You know, there are so many things that we can talk about, but this, I'm just trying to um, let you know that this particular topic, this chapter, life is jealous and nothing belongs to you, changed my entire perspective about life and how I attach myself to to things, to ideas, to to my husband, so to say, and it it really and it helps me. It gives me a lot of freedom and peace, knowing that whatever I have today, I just have to cherish it. You know, it it gives me the the peace, knowing that I am more or, more or less a caretaker of whatever it is I have been given. I see everything that I have as a gift given to me to take care of it for the time that I am here on earth, for the time that I'm alive. So the, this question of attachment to things and ideas is, is not there. I can easily let go of anyone at any point. I can let go of any idea at any point when that idea has expired, when that opinion has expired. So, and this is for me, there is a lot of freedom in it because especially if you begin to really think that way if you are someone that is suffering from not having the ability to let go if you are so much attached to a person attached to a vision attached to an, an idea you are attached to your identity attached to a belief system it's going to be very difficult you will suffer for it because when that belief system or that identity is be it is um, attacked, then your world collapses because you see the whole world through that identity, through that idea, through that desire, through that opinion. Um, this is why a lot of people that have this self-identity, maybe they see themselves as um, a man or as a woman or, I don't know, they have all kinds of identities or they see themselves as a Christian or as a Muslim. Um, or as a project manager or as a father or as a mother or whatever it is and when something happens and maybe through a catastrophe or 
or maybe someone that is a role model, a beautiful, beautiful lady, a role model. She is beautiful inside and out, like a perfect, a perfect woman. And then she identifies with this, with this, with this um, beauty. What then happens when no one knows she has an accident and she loses her eye or her face is burned? Of course, thank God for 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 um, um, surgery nowadays. You know, cosmetic surgery, a lot of things can be repaired. But um, there are certain things that might not be repaired, or even if they are repaired, they will never go back to normal how how they were. Uh, you know, so in this particular moment, if she was so identified with her beauty, and now that her beauty is gone. How do you think she's going to continue with her life after that? This kind of person will never find happiness. Um, except they do the work to really start disidentifying from, from this belief, from this identity of beauty. To start realizing that they are actually beyond this physical beauty so this is the idea of um, this uh, life is jealous and nothing belongs to you which really helps you to detach from your beliefs that are hurting you to detach from your identities to understand that that life is the ultimate that we are all here as representatives of of life and um, whatever we have been given we should be thankful and grateful for for what we have been given we should be good custodians of all that we have good custodians of our of our relationships of our children of our jobs uh, you know treat them as if we have been loaned we have been borrowed you know we have been given these things to take care of them while we are here just like you have a garden you take care of your flowers this is how from my perspective it is my truth of course you will have your own truth when you read this book you know so you treat these things as as your as a gift you know just as a gift and i i think that when when we begin to live with zero attachments our lives will change for the better so my friends i would say that this is the end for now so get the book for those of you who would who would love um, paperback, I would recommend. For me, I prefer to read um, hard copies. <laughs> it's better to have something handy. Uh, you know, for, I prefer to read hard copies or paperback for myself. Um, but yeah, not everybody can get the paperback. So get the ebook now, today, and tomorrow as my Valentine gift to you. And please also give it to your friends and your family. And I'm sure that they will benefit from the wisdom in this book. So I'm going to be doing a lot of, uh, in the next days, expect more videos. I will be covering all the chapters. We have about 33 chapters, I think. Yeah, 33 chapters here. And wait, just one minute. There are about, yeah. 33 chapters so I'm going to be taking all the chapters one after the other and doing some, some kind of a summary you know for you we will be reading the book together over the next couple of weeks and if you have read this book I would really appreciate it if you leave me your reviews your comments and I really would want to know what you are thinking what is your truth or maybe you find something, a particular chapter, um, a little bit off for you. I am interested. I really want to know what you think about about any any topic. Maybe you, I don't know. Just just let me know what you think. It will really help me to know what my readers think about these topics. If we are on the same wavelength or not, or not. And of course, it will help me to prepare myself for my subsequent books. And they, of course, improve them for you. Thank you very much and uh, see you in my next video then.